Hi, this is Heather Moore from Baltimore, Maryland, and Dinner Fash Sassanax. You're listening to the Outlander Cast with Mary and Blake. All the way from Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Hello. Hello, everybody. Are you feeling those drums? I'm feeling those drums. I still feel those drums. I'm like doing it. I'm, I'm motioning. I'm like, I'm, is this with my hands? Am I using a mallet of some sort? I don't know. I'm going to mix it up every time. But hello, I am your host, Mary Larson. My name's Blake, and I've never received underwear in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. You're welcome. <laughs> Glad you learned that. See, Blake, we've been together for 10 years, and yet you can still learn new things about me. I still... I, you know what? I've actually listened to that episode now mm-hmm. multiple times. Oh, dear. But not the whole episode, of course. Okay. Just that one bit. Just that, that one. I must have listened to that one <laughs> bit. I'd say at least maybe five, six times. Okay. Just because I Because <laughs> you I still can't. don't understand camp friendship? I, I still don't get it. <laughs> I still don't know how the whole thing came up. Because of... Annika, Annika. I know, I know, but just, I don't know how, I don't know how. Well, before we begin. I don't even know how it came to your mind. Freaking underwear. Camp besties, camp besties. <laughs> it came to my mind because that was a very remarkable um, experience for me. Oh you know, my good. Chain, chain mail undies. Um, before we begin, we want to let you know that this episode, episode 106 of Outlander Cast. Whoa, what was that sound, Blake? I don't know what that was. It was like a little, someone stepped on a frog or something. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Outlander Cast is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. It's a place of discovering the best makeup and skincare products while uncovering your confidence as a woman. Now, guys, MinuteWithMary.com, that's me. The way that I want you to find out about it is I want you just to search the hashtag MinuteWithMary in Facebook. So just make that all one word, MinuteWithMary, add a little hashtag in front, search it, find my group. I have a VIP group. I share all sorts of fun things that you're going to want to know about, especially this time of year, especially this week, even starting the day you're listening to this episode, you're going to want to be in on that. So don't miss out. I am here to help you discover uh, you know, the best makeup and skincare. So let me help you, minutewithmary.com. And once again, if you are a Sassanoc level or above patron, you get a 10% off discount. Mm-hmm. Choo-choo. All right. Are you ready to release the hounds? Yes, I am. Let's do it. Well, now this is normally when we start with the website feedback, but okay. those of you who are listening to the podcast right now don't know, we are actually on Facebook Live. Yes, we are. Doing this. Yes, uh, we and are. And we are in the Outlander Cast clan gathering, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, and I think actually we might be doing the listener feedback episodes live going forward, perhaps, maybe. You know, I, I'm not sure. We'll it all see. depends upon our bairns. Yeah, it all depends on the, upon the kids. But regardless, uh, this, like, like I said, this is normally when we start with the website, but there is... Uh, a comment here that I do want to start with. Tell me about it's it. It's from my boy Shane, Shane Bowman. He is amazing, a, a true supporter of the show, and I, I love having him watch live right now. So Shane, thank you very much uh, for watching. Please go check Shane out, actually, the, at the Heisenberg Chronicles. If you love Breaking Bad, Shane has probably the most comprehensive <laughs> uh, uh, resource for Breaking Bad on this planet. So the Heisenberg Chronicles. Anyway, Shane says, Happy Thanksgiving, Mar- uh, Blake and Mary. Hi, Shane. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving to you. There was too much in this episode that was predictable. The minute she said typhoid fever in the last episode, I said, go find the source in the gallery. (laughs) That is the typhoid. Gallery, not gallery. It's not like they went somewhere fancy to go look at artwork. Gallery. I'm on Burgundy. Oh, you were reading what Shane wrote? Yes. That is the typical (laughs) typhoid Mary story. 
in a nutshell. The minute we met Elias, I knew he would die of the disease. The same with the goat lady, that she would be critical to the story. This is all straight out of the procedural TV toolkit, which is why the show suffers when it branches out of the serial stuff and goes into the, in quotes, problem of the week stories. That said, gorgeous cinematography, wonderful bear score, hashtag bear flare, and the kid who played Elias was perfect. Shane, brother. You and I are on the same page. I, now, I did enjoy the episode, but yes, like I said last episode, this was quite, this episode was familiar. It was a little tired, and you are 100% right when you say it is the the TV procedural toolkit. Like, this could have come straight out of, like, Law & Order or, okay. you know, one of those kind of things. It makes, it, it makes complete sense. So, yes, Shane, you are 100% right. All right, now it is time to go... Uh, for uh, the website. Are you ready for this? Yes. All right. So, uh, Bra, Bro, uh, Bro PS uh, has come back and, and, and has, again, like last week, wants to call us out on a couple of things. Okay, here. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, he says, or she says, many ships carried live animals to give them men fresh milk and meat. Most likely yes. would have been the wife of a sailor. Yeah. Rabbits play a part all throughout season three and we will see more. Yes. And I hope so because I do like that motif. Jamie wasn't merely a stable boy, Blake. He was the nephew of the Laird. He was only in the stables to be incognito. He was a laird in his own right at Lallybrock. Yes. I, oh, 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 you know what? I'll keep reading and then we'll go from there. Okay. The actors called themselves Fursily, not Margus, which I, I, I'm kind of take committed now. I'm, ty- I'm, I'm kind of committed to this take that I'm going to go with Margus. Even though they call themselves Farsily or Fursily, I don't know. I'm, I'm take committed. If you notice, Jamie. You know why I like Margus better? Why? Because there's such debate about Marsily's name. Yes, that's There's right. There's such debate. And people have been saying her name differently in their own head or with the audiobooks for years. And it's like, oh, you know, yeah. it's like when you talk to somebody and they put the wrong syllable, you know, they put emphasis the emphasis on the wrong, on the wrong, syllable. On the wrong syllable. Like, <laughs> you know, they do something weird like that and you're like, yeah, that's not how I say it at all, which is what I do all the time. So as a podcast listener, I'm apologizing because I do that frequently. Nonetheless, I like yours, Blake. Continue. <laughs> and if you notice, Jamie is concentrating on the pick with Claire in it, not necessarily the picks of Bree. Uh, let me address a couple of these things. Yes, Jamie is the laird of a, uh, the, the nephew of the laird. He is a laird in his own right. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll go along to get along with that. However, just because the, he is the nephew of a laird, laird and he may be a laird unto his own self, that doesn't mean he's special. That doesn't mean he's Superman. He's just a guy. And what they have done is they've taken him from being a guy and they've made him into Red Jamie, always being able to say the right thing all the time, to Mm -hmm. do the right thing all the time, always has the perfect answer to everything. And that is what I was trying to say when I was talking about it in the last episode. Outlander has a Superman problem because Superman is probably the hardest character to write for in all of film. He's just good. He's just perfect all the time. There's nothing to it. Well, there's there's no he's just it's great. It's great to look up to. It's a great it's a great role model for people, but he's he's too hard to write for because he's just perfect all the time, which again is probably why you saw what they did in that in the latest film Man of Steel. I didn't see it. I like Well, you saw asleep. Man you saw Man of Steel. Did we I? watched it together. Yeah. Oh, with Lois Lane and the Ice? Yes. I was bored. <laughs> so so <laughs> Superman is white bread. That's what he he's is. He's vanilla. He's boring. I love him. He's and, a hunk, but he's boring. And that is what Jamie is an outlander. He's, no. Yeah, well, let me let me let me let me let me flesh out that point. Just don't diss. Jamie is Superman, which is a good thing. But he's white bread. He's always perfect all the time. And for him to do what he did with uh with Margus, mm-hmm. remember I'm take committed. For him to do with what he did with Margus is the absolute right thing for him to do because it finally gives him something, a chink in his armor. It unsupermans him is what you're saying? It, it de-supermans there you go. Jamie. And that's the whole point. It makes him more like Hercules. <laughs> okay, so like a little demigod, but he's got this thing going on on Earth and he's like kind of normal and kind of human and kind of messes up, but he's still 
is amazing. And uh, and and if he is concentrating on the pick with Claire, I think it's more. Yes, he's concentrating on the pick with Claire, obviously. But it, I think the whole thing with the pictures isn't necessarily. You can't take that literally. It's more a symbolic thing where he's looking at his family, trying to get him through this hard time. All right. Next, we have Last 12C. This is on the website as well. Blake, I'm asking you. Yes. Good. Okay. Last 12C said, OMG, I was so excited listening to your podcast because you were the first that I've heard that actually got the storyline on the Artemis. The only theory that I have been able to come up with to explain why so many people didn't appreciate it was that in a way, Jamie was simply a plot device in this episode that served the purpose of developing... What do we call it? Margus. Margus. We're take we're take committed. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm maintaining it. Okay. <laughs> Developing Marcus. He sat in the brig out of his mind with anxiety and depression. Cray cray. Totally powerless to do anything about Claire. Trapped on a British man of war with 300 plague ridden men. He served as a central figurehead around which everyone else moved providing this truly significant plot of the story. That's not what most people expect from Jamie. And as Blake said, Jamie is supposed to be super mean. Here it was... Margus, who came to <laughs> save the day. Since there was literally nothing that Jamie could have done, and Fergus explained the various insurmountable problems, I thought this was a very clever idea to explain that was happening on the Artemis while Claire was stuck on the porpoise. Really enjoyed the porpoise storyline as well. It was rather amazing when a show can, in a single episode, create a character and a relationship that is so amazingly poignant of that of Elias Pound, the look on that kid's face when Claire told him how incredibly impressive he was simply made my heart swell. And Katrina broke that heart when she delivered the final stitch. Oh my God, right, right through the nose. I was in a fetal position at that point. It hurt so good. Blake, dude. Annika, uncover a undercover agent extraordinaire is not a good choice to include in your bad <laughs> list. She is revered. She wasn't a coincidence. She was exactly where she was supposed to be as a gunner's wife who was well versed in the rhythms of the ship and the sea. She was a valuable resource to Claire and a true heroine. Your case against her sounded like, in keeping with the recurrent reference, a rabbit hole. All right, all Ba-dum-bum-tang. right, all right. You know what? I let's, like that. Let's, let's calm down. I'm not saying the fact that she's on the ship is a coincidence. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, it's a coincidence that she is so eager to help Claire no. to be like, "I'm getting you off this boat, no. and we're gonna do this." She loves and I can't even man. speak your language, but I'm still gonna do it. No, nope. I'm gonna make a raft, and you're, I'm getting. I'm going to give you literally Camp every friend. single thing you need to get off this boat. And Blake, here you go. Did you ever go to overnight camp? No. <laughs> you know what? I can tell. You can I tell. I can tell. Why? Because I don't have pretty underwear? N- <laughs> <laughs> I can tell because you can't appreciate the friendships that you can get in mm-hmm. a week or two weeks or three weeks. You know nothing, John Snow. Yeah, I don't That's know. That's what I'm going to say. Angela Hickey here on Facebook says, uh, Jamie is not perfect, Blake. And Correct. Mary, reach over and give him a smack. LOL. Listen. I'm not saying he's he's perfect, perfect, but he's pretty much written as close to perfect as possible. Claire even says herself, you are the king of men. The only time I've ever seen him do something wrong is this season so far. That's it. That's the only time. Even in the book, the first the first book, Outlander, that I'm reading, I'm about halfway through, he's done literally nothing wrong. So I'm just saying, just saying, he's the closest thing to Superman that we're going to get in Outlander. And I think it's by design. Ali Buru on the website says, wow, this episode has me all Twitter-pated. I don't, I don't know what Twitter-pated. What I'll is. Google it. You keep reading. Thank you. I'm very split about it in some ways, but overall, I loved it. I'm flinging out a- Infatuated four- or obsessed ah. in a state of nervous excitement. Ah, okay. There we go. I'm flinging out a 4.8 kilt rating. Pretty high for me and I will try to explain myself. This episode was beautiful, both visually and emotionally. It had all the feels, as Mary said. All and the feels. All the, all the copays, all the feels, everything. All the minutes. And I found it swift and energetic pace, such a change from the doldrums last week. I could barely catch my breath. 
from the brig of the Artemis to the bowels of the porpoise. Ew. It was non-stop. I'm honestly having a hard time whittling down all the high points of this episode, but since there were so many, I guess I'll just have to go with my GBG. Otherwise, this comment will be too long. The good. Oh, so much good. Elias Pound, such a darling young man. I prayed from the beginning for him to live. I loved him as did Claire, and it broke my heart at the end when she said for one to finish up sewing with the canvas. Lordy, I was in tears. Oh, mother. Yes. yes oh, but... mother. Oh, mother. Oh, I can't. My bad. Oh. See, this was what I'm super split about. Super what? Super split. Super split. Super split, like split. Like I'm having a difficulty not fully knowing how I feel about this issue. Yes, not, not split like, you know, the M. Night Shyamalan movie where you get multiple persons. She's I just I don't even split. know what that movie is. Uh, Jamie. On the one hand, I understand that the show is using him to create drama, and I'm down with that since the show is the show, the book is the book. Okay. We all know this, okay? That's a rule. That, that's how it goes. Commandment number three. What, ha- what happens in the book stays in the book. Can we have these written down so I can remember? I'm mixing them all up. <laughs> his performance was great. He was emotive and crazy, and I felt his desperation in the moment. But, hashtag body snatcher Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? It just struck me wrong that Jamie would be out of control enough to get his fine butt thrown in the brig. This guy is a master of smuggling, has an epic poker face, and would bide his time waiting for his chance to get Claire back. I don't know. It just isn't the Jamie I know, but I understand why they did it. This version of emo Jamie <laughs> gave us a chance to let Fergus and Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put all black eyeliner on him in the in the little <laughs> cage. Oh, I only got one extra piece of bread today. I hope the sun is as black as my heart. Me. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't have sex, nobody has sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Sorry. Uh, continue. Th- this emo version, Jamie. <laughs> this version of emo Jamie gave us a chance to let Fergus and Marcelie shine in their relationship. Hashtag Marcus. Marcus. I'm sticking with it. I don't care what anybody says. And their agency for that, I am perfectly happy to whistle past what I consider a different interpretation of Jamie, otherwise known as whistling past the graveyard. Uh, I will say that. Uh, It is a different interpretation of Jamie from the book, from what I can imagine. Um, But I do feel for Jamie. I I feel like Jamie is going through a, a, a hard time, and he just just got back with his wife finally yeah. after 20 years yeah if that were me yeah i would be freaking the f out i'd i'd find the, i'd i'd i would macgyver that shit i already said i'd be doing the same thing i know <laughs> my great ha i have several but i'll start with mr Tompkins, bitching and moaning about the weeks he's had oh my god i laughed at the poor guy he just needs a hug and a blankie and some whiskey oh my gosh <laughs> more great was claire cussing up a storm because of the Preach. idiots on the ship drinking Preach. her pure alcohol and poisoning themselves i feel you claire but more great was annika sorry blake she's my hero and i just have to say yes if you're gonna read any of the outlander books buckle down and get ready for coincidence upon yes. coincidence upon coinky dink holy cow these books will make your head spin hold on to your butts where is it i don't know where welcome <laughs> to jurassic Park. hold on to your books because there's a whole lot of it coming down the line there's tons more but i have to stop myself i'm sure the others will hit all the points i'm missing yeah, the coincidences just drive me insane. They drive me insane. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. Uh, I can keep going with them. The coincidences. Okay. Beth Warstad said, "Okay, I'm so surprised that I have not read about this in any other comments. For me, Claire's last. Uh, let's see, Claire, Claire's last scene with Elias took me right back to season two's Je Suis Pue. Remember when Claire has her meltdown flashback of World War II and she tells Jamie that she put aside her memories of that ambush. She car- compartmentalized. That was a long word to read. <laughs> compartmentalized. Whoa, how many letters are in that word? Because there was nothing she could have done but watching Ross and Kincaid train and all she could hear was Max Lucas calling out for his mother in the dead of night. With Elias, she was able to be there to comfort him as though his mother was with him and calling him home. I was crying anyway, but I really tuned up when I realized that she was able to do for Elias what she couldn't do for the corporal. In some small way, I think that eases the burden of that memory for her. Oh my God, Beth. Beth, you just blew my mind. Yes. 
You just blew my mind, Beth. <laughs> Dang. Uh, On another note, um, Beth loves when Jamie calls Fergus Monfi, my son, after he gives them his blessing. Oh, Did I say that kind of right? I think, sure, why not? I took Italian. Buongiorno. I don't know. <laughs> Cindy Reeves wrote in and said, thank you. I've been listening for two weeks now. This is my first GBG and you read it. Yeah, I love your podcast and I love Outlander. You know what, Cindy? Thank you. Thank you very much. On Facebook, Kim Downing says, oh my God, I was cracking up over Mary saying that she were Claire. She would have ripped the page about Jamie out of the captain's log and eat in it. That's right, Kim. <laughs> I still stick to it. It's fiber. <laughs> it will come out. It's just paper. People eat paper all the time. Okay, and Kim says, it's but I guess, I guess he would have just rewritten it. Thanks for making Rush Hour traffic enjoyable. People told, my kids eat, my son ate a, $20 bill. Remember when we say you had a $20 bill? <laughs> that came out. Angela Hickey said, you guys, <laughs> this is the best freaking podcast episode in a oh. long time. I love them all, but this one was priceless. I laughed so much, was listening in bed with earbuds, and was suppressing giggles so much that I had to get up and go downstairs, afraid I would wake the hubby up. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Rachel Mitchell Ferguson says, I was totally invited to do a pretty panty exchange when I was in high school. Rachel. When were you in high school? Were we part of the same chain? Did I send you panties? Uh, she said, so, so funny to hear you talk about yours, Mary. And only I dropped the bond and said, anybody pretty was. See, this is the problem. I sent five people undies and I didn't get any. <laughs> You're such a nerd. I didn't you, get any. Of course, you'd be like, you know what? I'm going to be nice. And I'm going to send 10. I'm, gonna, I'm totally going to do I this. I specifically remember. I was like, I'm going to go and find pretty flowers. You are such a Gryffindor. You're a wizard, Harry. You're totally a Gryffindor. What What does being brave have to do with a panty No, exchange? you're just doing the right thing, always. I just, you, you're just such a Gryffindor. You're just... I feel like a panty exchange was actually invented by a Hufflepuff, Blake. <laughs> Sounds like a stupid, the, unbrave idea. Well, the... the <laughs> <laughs> it's just stupid. No, actually, I love Hufflepuff so much, and it would be in the spirit of friendship, which is perfect for Hufflepuffs. <laughs> Continuing on, Meredith Bastillo said, awesome episode as always. Y'all gave me so many laughs last night that as I was editing pictures, um, while I was editing pictures, Blake Larson, I'm so impressed that you knew about Midnight Sun. Closet Twilight fan, maybe? Oh. Meredith? No, you, you have no idea. You have no idea about Blake and Twilight, and he's going to tell you a quick little five seconds about Twilight. Say it out loud. No, I was given the pleasure. Well, more like ultimatum. No, the ultimatum well, was to yeah, read Harry Potter. That's true. Uh, Mary As we started dating, I was like, hi, I like you, except the seventh book is coming out and the fifth movie is coming out. And if you don't read them, we can't date. Yes, that's true. That's how I am, guys. That's how I am. <laughs> and then after that, I started to read another series. That was called Twilight. And I <laughs> read the books. I read the, the books, cover to cover. And we went to go see the movies and, and everything. We... Mary plays Twilight on days it's a bad day and she just wants to she just wants to go twi hard on me. <laughs> so I know all about them just because of my my darling wife. Kind of like how Outlander worked out. <laughs> See? All these books that I bring into your life. Little did you know. Monica Lee Fornassi said 4.9 out of 5 kilts for sure. It was pretty close to perfect. The good. Can we talk about Lyle? Love. Mm -hmm. love love Lyle he is in Claire's relationship throughout the whole plague on the ship just pulls at the heartstrings and when they poor Lyle passes when the poor Lyle passes from typhoid as they are celebrating let me just tell you why is she calling him Lyle I'm really confused because that's his, that's his real name I think the actor's name okay I think maybe okay sure why not I don't know you're seeing Elias I think maybe Maybe you're trying I to I think say she Elias. probably means Elias. Okay, because I'm like, who's this Lyle? I've watched this episode four times. <laughs> <laughs> who's this Lyle that Claire got to know? I'm on Burgundy. <laughs> Where did I miss it? <laughs> <laughs> Was he that random guy that didn't like her in the beginning, but that started to like her at the end? You know, the guy with the with the brownish, reddish yes, hair? Yes, You know, that guy was like, was his name Lyle? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Let me just tell you, the feels were real, and so were the tears, by the way. And Claire getting off that ship, love it. I knew it was coming, but this leads to my only bad. You had to end the episode there, really? I'm just saying, that was a little mean. But since they are bringing my beloved Outlander to life, I suppose I can forgive them for this cliffhanger ending. My great was how 
Margus uh, got Jamie <laughs> out of lockup. <laughs> Leave it to the woman to think of a clever way to get it done instead of stealing the keys and taking over the ship. It's funny how she doesn't know how much she and Claire are like, yeah. And you know what, Monica? I totally agree. I just loved this. I love seeing these two women. And I know we've only seen a little bit of Marcelli, but yep. man, is that girl strong. Man, is she a strong woman. And to have her and Claire and to have them at odds and now to have this dynamic of a 15-year-old woman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ready to become a woman in many ways. But well, she's 18 in the show. Apparently. Okay, sorry. Yes, 18. That makes me feel a lot better about the fact because, you know, Fergus is like 86 and she <laughs> and she just came out of the womb. All the time correcting night cream. <laughs> All of it. I will say, though, let me. I will say this. This is yet another episode we are ending on. I won't say this one was emotionally manipulative, but it's just another cliffhanger. It's, and that's why I'm saying that these episodes are becoming repetitive almost. And, and, and as Shane said earlier in this episode, predictable. It's just kind of like, okay, we're going to leave off on this cliffhanger and it's just like, wait till next week, guys. I just, it's. Ee it's leaving a bad taste in my mouth and I, it, it's, and I don't want them. I want them to just, I want them to take chances. Do you know what I mean? Jelly bean. Like when we watched the leftovers I, and I know it's a totally different show, but international assassin for those of you who have watched the leftovers. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't watched the leftovers, we actually have a podcast about it. Go to livingreminders.com and check us out. Um, sorry, self uh, shameless plug, but seriously do go watch the leftovers on HBO. It's in my top five of mm -hmm. all time. Um, international assassin. Now that is a chance. That is that is a gamble. That is that is breaking television ground. Now I'm not saying I want Outlander to break television ground every single episode. It can't. It's impossible. You, you can't maintain that. I just don't want them to become repetitive, and they're they're falling into this trap almost for the, the this half of season three. The first five episodes, even of Lost Things. They were very good. I mean, even even the first six episodes. Just, just hold your tongue. They were very. Just wait. Just have patience, my love. Okay. All right. All right. Just have patience. Take a deep breath, like I teach the kids. One, two, three. I'm taking care of me. <laughs> Take your breath. Angela says, Blake, do you know that Lauren and Caesar are doing a Twitter Q and A, and the questions get tagged? Ask firstly. Just saying. Listen. Everybody else can call him firstly. I'm happy with it. I'm take committed. I have to go with Margus. I made the take. I, I got to stick to it. I have to back it up now. <laughs> Alyssa Gomez gave it 4.5 out of 5 kills. A compelling episode from start to finish. I was on the edge of my seat. The good. Seeing Claire use her wits to get out of a situation and seeing Fergus stand up to Jamie was brilliant. The bad. While Claire had full rights to lock up the one-eyed man, I still think it will come back to bite her in the butt later. And the best, the interactions between Jamie and Fergus was amazing. I loved how Fergus turned the argument around that he cares too much. A solid episode. And Donna Podio gave it five kills. Great episode. I see so many comments saying that they thought Jamie was out of character, but I thought the opposite. I felt like it, he was about to lose it. He was on the brink of going out of his mind with worry, thinking horrible things. Very believable for a man who had just recently reunited with his wife after 20 years of being apart. And you know what, Donna? That's how I feel. That's how I feel. If someone took Blake on a boat, I would I would do all that kind of stuff. I would have... I don't think Jamie tried hard enough. Right. I would have been biting at that wood. <laughs> like trying to get out of the cell. I would have been doing something. I would have been scratching my way out you know, or it, something. You kind of remind me... Do you remember um, The Matrix Reloaded? When, when Neo's in the building and he has the key and he has to unlock the door to get to the architect. Oh my gosh, all those movies just blend into one and it's <laughs> well, like a psychedelic trip and I don't even do psychedelic things. Well, there's this one part with... Where, with um, uh, oh my God! What the heck is her name? That's gonna. It's gonna. Trinity. Real, Trinity. Thank you. When when Trinity is in the building and she's like, uh, she has to blow up the building or something to get him out. And, yeah. And uh, the person that she's with, she's like, she says, Trinity, you you had to do this all in one second. And and, yes. and and Trinity says, I'll blow up that whole goddamn building in one second. And like that. Yes, she loves him that much that she's ripping to go. Yeah, and like yes. that. I just 
that scene, I, I get chills thinking about it right now. Like I legitimately, I, I, my hair is standing up on my arm. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was, it was wonderful writing and it was great acting, but that's the way that I feel. I feel like that's how you would be number one. But and that's how Jamie would that's be. That's how Jamie is. Trinity is probably a Taurus. Oh, she's totally. That's how bulls protect their herd. That's what we do. We protect. That's right. Oh, I got something here I, I do want to read. Uh, Sherry Gilbert says, Mary, all that giggling listening to you earlier. I forgot something at the grocery store, so I had to go back in my PJs. <laughs> at, oh, my God. At 8.30 at night on Thanksgiving Eve. Good luck. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rosemary Knight wrote in said, I had to watch the episode a few times to get my final kilt rating. I would give the episode a 4.7 kilt. I loved most of the episode. In fact, many of the things that I had a problem with in 309 were corrected in this episode. We had wonderful relationship dynamics and an amazing plot line aboard the porpoise filled with plenty of drama and intrigue that actually did move the story along and unlike with 309 the characters informed the plot not the other way around i had several goods finally we got to see more of fergus and marsley aka margus and we're certainly (laughs) rewarded i loved these two both together and apart and their chemistry was on fire i actually like show fergus and marsley a lot and then a lot more than their book counterparts we also finally saw jamie focusing on brie We can now imagine that Jamie probably spent most of his alone time aboard the Arnimus looking at Bree's pictures, and I loved every minute aboard the Porpoise. Crisis Claire is at her best when it makes sense. This is why book readers had a problem with Claire spending most of the episode 307 trying to save a man who tried to rape and kill her. We knew that Claire would have plenty of opportunities this season to use her skills at Lollybrock and on the Arnimus and especially on the Porpoise. So Rosemary's Bad was the element of the locked up Jamie story aboard the Artemis that could have easily been fixed with different dialogue. She gets that Captain Reigns um, would retain would detain an irrational Jamie for the good of the ship. However, she had a hard time believing that he would entertain the notion of throwing Jamie and Fergus overboard or allow the crew to violate Marsley. Jared Fraser owns the ship. And Captain Reigns is a respected captain that Jared trusts. Rosemary can't believe that he would intentionally allow harm to come to his employer's family. How would he explain that to Jared? This problem could have easily been fixed by not having Reigns present during that conversation. Secondly, Rosemary understands that Jamie was desperate, but he was uncharacteristically cruel to Fergus. And again, this could have been fixed with a sincere apology to his adopted son when he was released. And her great was Elias Pound. What an amazing young actor. Elias Pound was a very minor character in the book. And Rosemary barely even remembers his death. This is one of those instances where expanding a book character made for great drama. And she loved the relationship between Claire and this young man. And Rosemary cried ugly tears when that (laughs) poor boy died. Uh, Rosemary. That this is why she's an all star. This is why we always include her. Hey in now. She just, You're an all star. She, hey, she gets it, man. Get your she game is, on. Thank you very much. Go play. Uh, Peg Flick here in the uh, in the uh, in the in the chat room says, "When your career is to be a showrunner, then you get to call the shots." Blake, listen, I'm not I'm not a showrunner. I get it. It's not my show, but this is my show here. This little, this little. This is our time. This is our time down here. This is our time down here. And when I give my review of an episode, it's my job to say, hey, this was good. This was bad. And this is what I really loved. And if I just fawned over the episode constantly, 100% of the time, this show would suck. I'm sorry. It would suck. Our podcast show would suck. Yes, our podcast would suck. And nobody would listen to it. I'm giving you my honest opinion. And uh, it, and, and, and we can just sit here for uh, an hour and, and not talk. How's that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love to talk. What I are know, we that's doing? That's what I'm saying. So let's, let's, let's talk about uh, what we can. And Laura Robertson does say, can we have a show of hands from anyone who seriously considered sending Mary underwear? <gasps> we are in the trust tree here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, ever since then, I have been so upset to do any kind of a chain thing. Like this time of year, people often do like a chain Christmas ornament thing where like everyone sends someone a special little Christmas ornament. And, oh, my God. So fun. And I'm like, I don't trust anybody because I never got panties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
trust any of y'all. <laughs> Melody Jennings says, oh my God, so excited to catch you guys live. Thank you. Dorcas and Bubbies to you both. <laughs> Dorcas and Bubbies Dorcas for Dorcas and life. Bubbies. <laughs> Veronica Agronov Defoe said, I just want to say that I'd love a summer camp cabin with Claire, Annika, and Mary as my roommates. <laughs> All right. Uh, to the emails. Uh, this one is from Hannah. She says, it's so exciting to finally engage in the podcast. Thank you. Uh, she is from Dortmund, Germany, and she does not know anybody watching this series, so she's always thrilled Dortmund. to see that there is a new podcast online. Minute with Mary ships to, to Germany. P.S. <laughs> Actually, we are her first podcast ever, <gasps> and she basically discovered it by accident. Yay! Well, you know what? what? beautiful accident. This one... If I could find it, this one, Hannah, is for you. Thank you very much for being a good listener. Yay. Uh, all right. She says, uh, the kilt rating is 3.7. There was a lot I did not like about this episode. Therefore, the low rating. The good was Mr. Pound. Even though we barely spent any time with him considering all the episodes we watched, I feel like I knew him better than many of the characters that had more appearances. Uh, yeah. Can we talk about Leslie and Hayes? Just saying. Uh, it was brilliant how the character balanced between being in charge and still being a boy. I loved the scene when Claire tells him he is an impressive young man. Oh, His yes. smile was just mm. cute. So precious. The bad was the guards of the ship. I have no idea whether they had earplugs and glasses on so they could not see anything. But how the fracking hell could they not see or hear Claire escape both times? The first time the officer even says, stay in sight. And she is like, you are not going to see this anyway. For me, this was just plain stupid. And the second time, there are two women talking loudly at night, and there is a guard. Claire right and Annika throw this raft into the ocean, and you want me to believe that the god didn't hear it? I mean, yes, we are on a ship, and obviously there are noises and water splashing around. But wouldn't the god at least turn their head at such a noise? At least I could consider that part of his job. And it wasn't like the women were hiding. Claire stood on the rail yep. for ages. Yes. So that was my bad. Oh, oh. Bam. Just like that. A winner. Yes, Hannah gets the first one of the day. That. <laughs> Thank you. But yes. the great, I find it, I found it kind of hard to decide on what was great in this episode. I think there was a lot of good stuff, but nothing that really stood out to me. So I picked this one one line that Claire said. How many men do you want me to save? Yeah. I thought this was a great line and so accurate for her and the time and the setting. From Charlene, she says, I am a new listener from London. Yay! Hello! Uh, London, Ontar Ontario, Canada. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. You know what? Just because I screwed that up, you get another one. Minute with Mary ships to both London and Canada. <laughs> Shameless plug. Check us out <laughs> on livingreminderspodcast.com. What? <laughs> and she's loving our podcast, especially last week's Giggle Fest over Rumpy Pumpy. You two oh are God, hilarious. Rumpy the Rumpy Pumpy. Pumpy. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that. <laughs> I loved episode 310, Heaven and Earth, so much. I didn't think I'd enjoy seeing Claire and Jamie apart again, but I was riveted this whole episode. I give it a kilt rating of 4.8. My good, Jamie's time in the brig, both looking at the photos of Bree and the desperation in his voice when he talks to Fergus about losing Claire. The bad, Marcelli referring to Claire as that woman of his to Fergus. Why doesn't Fergus defend Claire? She was like a mother to him. I hope we see Claire and Fergus's relationship develop more in the future. They, 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 they've they literally said maybe a line and a half to each other this entire season so far. I, I, I think I would agree with you. Okay. The great. Yes. The relationship between Claire and Elias was sweet, protective, and absolutely heartbreaking. Absolutely. And uh, she also says, I only discovered Outlander on Netflix this September and raced through the first two seasons in a week. Only to find out that the season three was starting the very next day. What? Her personal Droughtlander was just one day Hold long. up. You don't even know what Droughtlander feels like? Oh my girl. Oh my God, you girl. Know, you know, you're like a person who's never seen the ocean. <laughs> Except it's a sad ocean. Yeah. Well, hold on to your butts because Droughtlander's coming in January, girlfriend. And you're going to want to stay with us. You're going to want to stay with Outlander cast because we're going to keep you covered. To Jurassic Park. Hold on to your butts. 
All right, this one is from Meredith. She says, I don't usually do the good, bad, and great, but this time I am because I had very mixed feelings about this episode. The good was seeing Claire as a doctor. She's so skilled, and I can't wait to see her use her 20th century expertise on the 18th mm -hmm. century. There were two things, and I'm sorry to say that one of them is Jamie. How dare he lash out at Fergus for being unwilling to mutiny? Saying that he doesn't know who love is was awful of him. Saying that to a person who lost his hand because he loved him. Get it together, man. The other criticism was something I will bring up in detail later. There is an essential part of the book aboard the ship that is missing. You saw Claire make friends with Annika and Elias Pound, but she made another friend late one night who she meets in another episode later on. A passenger who Claire instantly bonds with. Later on, they will have another encounter that will make Claire very uneasy about her relationship with Jamie. I have no doubt that this later encounter will occur, but it will now lack the counterbalance from the earlier encounter they skipped. I'll bring it up later, but I guarantee that the other readers are profoundly disappointed by this departure from the source material. The great, though, was, I believe, was Elias Pound. I loved that character who was willing to listen and learn what he could from Claire. His death was quite touching to me. And from Christine, she says, I am so glad Crisis Claire is back. She is awesome. Claire earned five kilts on this episode, with while Jamie only earned 4.4 kilts. So I guess together they average about a 4.74 the episode. This episode was about the characters. Albie Marber, who played Elias Pound is my good. What a fantastic casting. What a phenomenal character. The way he played off Cat gave me all the feels. I smiled, I laughed, and I cried. I was so afraid for him when he licked the grog off of his fingers. What the showrunners did with him in one episode was amazing. They made us feel something that when he died at the end, which makes you think again, what is the deal with Leslie and Hayes? <laughs> yes, I know. What is the deal with Leslie and Hayes? We don't, why don't we care about them? I'm afraid I might be lynched for saying this, but Jamie was my bad for this episode. Yikes. He was such an a-hole to Fergus. I've watched three times already, and I was more patient with him on the first viewing than the third. I found it a bit contrived that he was locked up, but the way he responded was oddly shocking and understandable on different viewings. With the first viewing, I saw a desperate man trying to save Claire from her kidnappers. But by the third viewing, I was disturbed by how he treated Fergus. He was a condescending and, and mean, which I guess in the end reflects his desperation. But most importantly, Claire was my great. Until she thought it was a good idea to jump off of a ship in the middle of the night. What? was that woman thinking crisis claire is one of my favorite characters on outlander and she showed up in spades in 310 when there is chaos around her this is when claire steps up takes charge and sets things right most of the time to watch her compartmentalize and push down any doubts she might have so that she can calm the mayhem is when she becomes the heroine that leads us through it all and katrina balf sells it she deserves all all the awards. <laughs> you know, I do really, really, really love Crisis Claire. And I think the show is at its best. <laughs> and, and, hmm. The show is at its best when Crisis Claire, I think, is in effect for the most part. Because Claire is vit obviously vitally important to the show. But it gives us that powerful female character that I think we all deserve. I think that's the Claire. When we think of Claire, that's the person to whom we we go to the default, right? That is, that's the, the default Claire, uh, Crisis Claire. And uh, we appreciate that. But as I'm saying this, one of the things that comes up to my brain, I, you know, I don't know how we all know, at least I think we all know, that the show is at its best when it was in Scotland. Uh, it was at its most comfortable. It was at its most um, narratively streamlined self. Um, and and I, I think it's because of the characters that we started the show off with. We, we were back to that, that original feeling. We were back to the Green Highlands. 
And when the show takes itself away from that, I think it's fair to say it's all a little uneasy. It's all a little... <laughs> my, my, my gut feeling here is to say it's a little insecure with itself. Like it's almost trying to do too much to make up for the fact that it's not in Scotland. And it's trying to say, look, we're a good show. We have so much action. We have all this great stuff going on. When it should just say, look at us. We're here. We're, we're doing what we do and we're doing it well. And when it's not like I, the, the episodes on the ship, the episodes in France, and even when it was in, when it was in Boston in, in, in season three here, I just feel like it was just a tad. I, I just I feel like it was just a tad, uh, like I said, insecure with itself, and I and I I don't know I I just eh, I don't know I, I wish I wish it were a little bit different. Uh, I wish I wish it just I wish it just had more confidence in what it was trying to do, and I I think I think that would be fine. Uh, Angela Hickey here says on on Facebook, I like that this episode did Crisis Claire, but did not do Heartless Bitchy Claire at the same time, <laughs> which it often pairs with Crisis Claire. But the balance was much better in this episode. And Yolanda Hawkins says they're trying too hard to make Leslie and Hayes into Rupert and Angus 2.0. I don't think so. Um, I, You see, I don't know. Um... I'm not sure if they're trying to be Rupert and Angus. I I think they want something like Rupert and Angus. Um, but I'm not. I, and even if they were trying to be Rupert and Angus 2.0, which I would be fine with, because you you need comedic relief in a show. You need to be able to laugh. Um, it, we talked about the leftovers earlier. Uh, and by the way, you, you you haven't heard Mary if you're listening to the podcast. You haven't heard her in a while because she actually had to go upstairs and console my son, who I think is crying up a storm right now. So that's why I'm. I'm talking so much. Um, <laughs> they they just haven't given enough time to to Leslie and Hayes for them to be Rupert and Angus 2.0. They, they and and they're just not as charming. They're not they're they're not given the same lines. And I wonder is that a product of the fact that we don't have Iris Stephen Bear because we know Iris Stephen Bear was brought in to write for specifically Rupert and Angus and also eventually what would become Black Jack Randall. But he was brought in to, to create that relationship and he did it perfectly. It was amazing. And he is not on staff this season for whatever reasons that he has. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's the reason why I, I, I'm not sure. Karen Rutledge says, maybe it feels contrived. Blake, uh, meaning uh, the season three stuff outside of Scotland. And yes, yes, it, it totally does feel contrived at times. It really does. It feels like we're being pushed into something because that is what the show, that is what the plot demands. The plot, and, and again, last episode, we talked about plot reactions as opposed to, as opposed to character actions. A, a, a plot reaction is Claire saying okay everything everything is uh, taken care of on this ship here everybody's on the way the, the plot demands that claire needs to get back to jamie but the plot also demands that she save everybody on the on on the porpoise so her plot reaction is save everybody get off the ship a real character would have said f the people on the ship i need to get back to my husband to save him i don't care if these people are healed i'm leaving because then that is a real choice. She actually has to make a moral choice for herself. Either she saves people or she gets her husband. Both make sense. Both are viable options. We have a roadblock. Each of the options takes away something from the other. If she goes to get her husband, the people die. If the people, if she stays on the ship, her husband potentially gets arrested. It just, it just makes sense. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, let's take a quick break just to talk about today's, uh, today's sponsor, which is Minute with Mary. And I wish Mary were here to, to do this with me right now, but we, I wanted to let you know that this episode is indeed brought to you by Minute with Mary. Uh, Mary, my wife, my gorgeous wife, uh, she runs this business. 
And it's all about finding confidence as a woman and discovering makeup and skincare products. And uh, the the best products that uh, I think that the <laughs> that the world has to offer, we'll put it that way. Um, and it, she can help you personally. Every, every transaction is done by her. And uh, if you have any any questions, just talk with her and search hashtag Minute with Mary uh, on Facebook, and you can find her there. Or just go to her Minute with Mary VIP group. You can search that on Facebook as well, and you can join it there, and you get special deals and special sales and all that other stuff. And also, too, if you want uh, a 10% discount on Minute with Mary products, actually go to patreon.com and become a $10 level or up patron of uh, Outlander cast and and let Mary know that you are one of them. But when you make an order, and she will give you a ten percent discount on any Minute with Mary product for any transaction. So just throwing that up, throwing that out there. She is amazing. I mean, I, uh, I mean, uh, the people here in the Facebook are are in the Facebook chatters saying many great things about Mary. Mary has great advice. Uh, you know, she, uh, you know, pfft, she's just amazing. So. Uh, that that she's she is awesome. She's my wife. She's the best. All right, let's get to the uh, the voicemails real quick. Hi, this is Jennifer Grab from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I said I was gonna call in um, for the first time to Mary just yesterday, and when I saw that nobody had called in yet, I thought this was fate. So here I am, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, I don't have a GBG or a kept rating because everything's always great with the show and it's always five, just like Mary says. So I'll just say that my favorite part or what I found most amazing in the episode was the CGI for sure. I was so convinced they were on the ocean. You would never have known they were sitting in a parking lot. So great to uh, call in for the first time and I look forward to listening to you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you very much for calling in. That is your sound because you're a new listener. Um, yeah, the CGI is actually quite good. Much better than the smoke in A, Mal- a- Malcolm. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, yeah, or creme de menthe. I would think it was creme de menthe, yeah. Uh, all right, let's do the next one. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Brenna from Boulder, Colorado. Um, I am a relatively new listener. I found you guys after A, Malcolm, and you are just fantastic. Um, I've been obsessively listening to your earlier um, podcast from way back in season one on my lunch workouts, and so, yeah, you guys are just great. Um, I'm calling about heaven and earth. Um, I thought I would really not like Claire and Jamie being apart as much as they were, um, but I actually enjoyed this episode. I think I give it four kills. Um, as far as a good, um, a bad, and a great, um, the good, I think, was... I love, I don't know how they're doing these special effects, but all of the shots of of the boat and the ocean and night on the water are, are just really beyond amazing, and it makes me really feel like I'm there, that I'm really part of the story. Um, so I've really been enjoying that. Um, the bad, I guess, you know, I know that um, Diana uses uh, rape as a plot device a lot in the books, and I just am getting really tired of every time you hear men speak, if they're always talking about raping somebody or something, or <laughs> um, I'm glad they didn't have um, angry cook attempt to, you know, do that business on Claire. It was a little funny that she turned it around, but again, I I, I think it's maybe part of the source material, but um, if we could find a way to move the plot forward in a different way, that would be fantastic. And the great, um, Kat is just so amazing. Her relationship with Baby Boy Pound, or whatever his name was, um, there and the music and her relationship with him, just the building of relationships that Outlander does is so fantastic, um, which I know you guys have already commented upon, but I wasn't expecting to get teary when um, when Baby Boy Pound died at the end, hmm. um, but I did. And, you know, it was it was Katrina touching his hair and, and the look that she gives him and the tone of her voice is just, like I said, that, that was my great. Um, so... You're amazing. Um, this is the first time I've called in. Um, I'm really excited that I can be part of this community. Um, and I just can't thank you guys enough for setting this up. So uh, have a really great night. Take care. Bye. We are getting new listeners galore. So this one is for you as well. Thank you very much. And I'm glad that you're part of our community. Thank you for, um, thank you for being a part of it. Uh, I, I, you know, the whole rape thing, I said in the last episode, I'm going to say it again. Yes, it is tired, dude. Oh my god. Oh my like I'm just 
that is me banging my head against my mic as hard as I can because I just can't with the rape anymore. And luckily, the guy didn't try to rape. The, the cook didn't try to rape Claire. Thank God. Oh, thank God. And it was good to get that turned around on him a little bit. But, you know, like, you're right. Guys in this show are just, and, and I don't want to hear the excuse, well, that's just how it was in the 18th century. Like, maybe it was. Maybe. Okay? But this is a television show. <laughs> History is not an excuse for writing a television show. Just because it happened doesn't mean it has to happen in the world that you're creating. And to that end, just because it happens in the book doesn't mean that it has to happen in your show. You can do whatever you want to do. And my darling bride is now back. Yay! She is now back. She can join us once again. Guess who's back? Back, back again. again. Sorry, no, I can't sing. Commandment number four. Mary's back. <laughs> Tell a friend. Um, we were. I was just talking about the tired trope of rape, and one of our callers just said, thank God that the cook didn't try to rape Claire, but she is indeed sick of all the men in this show either talking about raping someone or something all the time. I'm just, and I'm just saying it's a tired trope and I'm done with it. I'm done with it trying. That is the thing that moves the plot forward. That's the thing that swoops in. Like, I have a difficult time with reading it, with seeing it. And then I remind myself that one in four women is sexually assaulted. And I'm like, Yes. And it was so much worse back then. So part of me feels like this would have happened. Maybe. But again, I was just saying, just because it may have happened, does reality is not an excuse for storytelling. You can you can choose to not use rape as a plot device. To, oh, to, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you, you and I both know how much I love Halt and Catch Fire. Correct. Uh, it is a, a top five, easily. There's this one scene in season one where the, one of the couples, they're driving and they, there's nothing for them to do in the show. So all of a sudden, the plot demanded that there needs to be action for them. So the writers just made them get carjacked for no reason other than just because. And that is what moves the plot forward. And that is how it, it, it's that, that's so lazy. That is so lazy. And I'm saying this of one of my favorite television shows of all time, Halt and Catch Fire on AMC. Go watch it. It's amazing. But it's just lazy writing, and that's how I feel with rape in this show. Is it's just it's a it's an easy go to for the writers to be like, okay, we need to change the plot. Rape. I just I don't know. I just I'm I'm not a big fan. I'm I'm not a big fan of how they how they utilize it and how they utilize it so often. Do you know what I mean? I do. Okay, let's get to the next one. Hey, Mary and Blake, it's Suzanne from Northern Maine. Um, I'll try to keep this succinct so I don't get cut off. Anyway, Mary, I really appreciated your comments about Jamie, crazy Jamie, in this episode, um, because that was going to be my bad. And after listening to you in the podcast and then watching it again, um, yeah, I just felt differently about it. Um, I gave this five tilts. um, Love this episode. My, I don't really have, actually, actually, since you took away my bad, I don't really have any bads. (laughs) My greats. Um, is all I have, and uh, I'm a doctor, and uh, Dr. Claire in this episode was just fabulous, um, taking over the plague ship and saving everybody, but my biggest great was Elias, and um, I think that it really showed the difference between last week's episode and this week's episode, um, because I could care less whether Hayes jumped into the ocean and drowned last week. In fact, I was pushing him to jump and get over, you know, like, let's get this over with. Um, And this week, in one episode, um, they totally wrapped us around this one character, and I, every time I watch it, I'm in tears. And so, you know, when she says, it's time to come home, and, um, uh, oh, God, what's the other thing before she puts the needle through his nose? Um, Well, your mother would be so proud, and Mm. I just bawl every time. Um, Anyway, thank you so much, you guys. Nobody up here in northern Maine is watching Outlander, and so I'm desperate for people to talk to and listen to. <laughs> um, uh, I moved up here from Hawaii, actually, oh my after gosh. 20 years on Kauai, and um, everybody there watched it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the tropical theme. 
um, after missing my uh, my island. So this has been a lot of fun to see the tropics again. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours, and I hope your family has a great Thanksgiving and uh, looking forward to the last few episodes. Thank you. Um, okay. Take care. Have a good week and talk to you next week. Bye. What, what, I, what I want to know is why the hell would you move from Hawaii to Maine, northern Maine, like Canada? Why? I don't know. Hey, maybe maybe she's got things going on. I'm just saying, man, Hawaii. Whew. I've never been, but I'd love to go. <laughs> we would love to visit. Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's do the next one. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Lisa from San Diego. Um, I am in the middle of listening to your podcast on uh, Heaven and Earth. I'm sitting in a Target parking lot, and I had to stop and call because, Mary, you're so funny. I was laughing so hard. I w- you and I are alike because we were always the good girls who sent off the um, in the in the <laughs> mail chains. You yes. know, you were talking about at camp, you'd send in the, the underwear thing. Yes. Anyway, I was always the one that did that, and I was I sent out to whoever I should have, and never received a single thing back. And <laughs> right? I did it for not underwear, unfortunately, but um, we what else? We did books. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was older, we did dish towels, um, bookmarks, postcards, and I would always do it, and I was just laughing because I it, it didn't dawn on me till many times later that, oh, wait, I'm the only one doing this, and no one's doing it, so I finally, <laughs> like, broke myself of that habit. So, anyway, I just want to tell you, uh, you and I are together on that. Um, I think you guys are hilarious. I, I don't have anything constructive to add. I love the episode, and... Uh, Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lisa. That makes me very, very happy. And uh, it's good to know that there are other people out there just as kind-hearted and warm and as welcoming in Gryffindors like my beautiful Aww. bride sitting across the way from me. Because I am a Slytherin. I am a Slytherin through and through. You would have found a way to happy. trick everyone to give you all the panties. I, <laughs> especially if they were panties. Why wouldn't well, I? That's hysterical and gross at the same time. <laughs> Next voicemail. Last one. Hey, guys. Uh, it's Rosemary Knight. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, I went back and forth on this episode a few times before I could come to a final tilt rating, uh, but my final rating is a 4.8. I really enjoyed the episode. Uh, in fact, many of the things that I had a problem with uh, with 309 were corrected in this episode. We had a wonderful relationship dynamics and a couple of amazing plot lines filled with emotion, character development, intrigue that actually did move the story along. And unlike with 309, this episode followed Commandment 1. The characters moved the plot (laughs) along, not the other way around. Um, Hold on. Thank you, Rosemary. I appreciate that. Very nice of you. I like how she can keep the commitment straight, and I'm like, which one is this? I need the, to write it this down. Was the origi- this was the original take from Mary and Blake. <laughs> Characters move the plot, not the plot move the... It's the original take. Which commandment is the show is the show and the book is the book? That's commandment number three. I get the mixed up. Commandment number four is uh, we, Ian. Has to be young Ian. What about- uh, young Ian has to be we, Ian. What about you not being able to sing? That's commandment number five. What's commandment number two? Commandment number two is uh, the season that shall not be named. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll figure this out. And and actually, to technically, commandment number one mm-hmm. has to be that the show has to be balanced. Has to be balanced for it to be good. But I'm going to say the original commandment. Okay. The original take from Mary and Blake is yeah. that the plot never informs the characters. The characters always inform the plot. All right. Always. All right. As for my GBG, there were a few goods for me. Uh, we finally got to see Ferguson Marsley, and we were certainly rewarded. I loved these two, uh, both together and apart. I love seeing the impact Jamie had on them and how they saved him from himself by following the example that he'd always set for them. And their chemistry was on fire. Um, we also finally saw Jamie focus on Bree. Uh, we can now imagine that he probably spent most of his alone time looking at those pictures. And I loved every minute aboard the porpoise. Crisis Claire is at her best, when it makes sense, of course. Um, this is why book readers had a problem with Claire spending so much of episode 307 trying to save Excise Man, because we knew that Claire would have plenty of opportunities this season to use her skills. 
um, at Lollybrock, on the Artemis, and now on the Porpoise. Now, my bad was that Jamie was locked up in the first place. I get that the situation provided for a lot of character development and drama, but it made no sense. Jamie wasn't just a passenger or a crew member on the ship. He was a supercargo. He represented the ship's owner, Jared. While Reigns was the captain, Jamie was his boss. Captain Reigns was a respected captain that Jared trusts. He wouldn't override his boss's decision unless Jamie was asking to do something unsafe or illegal. And he wouldn't entertain the notion of throwing his boss or any of his family members overboard or let the crew violate Marsley. And he certainly wouldn't be joking with his crew about it. So I just found that un- unbelievable. Anyway, my great was Elias Pound. Oh, my God, what an amazing young actor. Uh, you know, Elias Pound was a very minor character in the book. And I remember that he died, but it really didn't affect me that much in the book. But this is one of those instances when expanding a book character made for great drama. Yes. I loved the relationship be- between Claire and, and Elias. And I got to tell you, I cried ugly tears when the boy died. It was just amazing. Mm-hmm. Same yep. here. I totally Same agree. Same here. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Rosemary, for calling in. Uh Hold on, where is it here? I, I was, it was saying that we have to have a whiteboard. Someone in the comment and okay. the comment thread, we have to have a whiteboard with uh, the commandments with all the with all the commandments for my use. Oh, uh, Teresa <laughs> Teresa McGuire says we have to we need a whiteboard for all of our commandments. We probably do. You know what? I think I might I think I might make uh, artwork for our commandments oh and, my and God. post them. There is many more things you could spend your time on, but you <laughs> I know. might do it. Well, uh, I think that is it, my darling. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that is that is the end of our episode here, and we're coming in just at just at about an hour, so we're good. That's it. That's the end. Perfect. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and for those of you who've been watching on Facebook Live, thank you so much. We love that we were able to come in as a little Thanksgiving Eve surprise. Oh, you know what? But well, you know what we do here? Normally, we do the final thoughts. Okay. No, normally we say, "Hey, the last final thoughts for this episode before we move on to the next." You, you, we got to get out. We got to get out the poison. Got to get out the demons if we have to. Go for it. But I'm going to change it up today. Oh, because today is Thanksgiving Eve. Oh, we're live. We are. So we're we're going to do two things here. Okay, we're going to say what we are thankful for. Okay. We're going to do one Outlander thankful for. Okay. And we're going to do one normal life thankful for. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with you, my darling. What is your Outlander thankful for? My Outlander thankful for is that season four filming has begun. Oh, okay. All right. And I feel like this train is going and it's picking up steam and it ain't going to stop. That's right. That's my thankful. And Um, your normal life thankful for. What do you got? My normal life thankful right now is that we have a babysitter (laughs) who is attending to our children with their night terrors um, while we're trying to record a podcast episode as I go up and hug them. So... Uh, yeah, my, my thankful for is not only for that babysitter, but for, um, our patrons who've helped make the babysitter possible so that we can record these podcasts with our difficult sleeping children who I love dearly, but they're just not the best sleepers. Right. So (laughs) that is so funny that I said, thank you to the babysitter. You're probably going to say something much more romantic, but how about you, Blake? Well, um, my outlander thankful for. I'm going to say I'm thankful for Michael Swan because he's living up to Steve McNutt. Yay! My my bro, my man. It's it's self self proclaimed bro, and we uh, we are we Steve and I were on the same level. G- great friend, obviously. I call him every day. Have a cell phone number, and we're 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 amazing friends. Actually, we 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 Marco Polo each other quite often, as a matter of fact. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your regular, regular thankful? My. Re- now, my love, I know you. My, I, you know my regular thankful. Aside from you, yes. that, that I'm always that I'm, I'm always thankful, thankful for. I know your other thankful. Yes, you do. What is my other thankful? My Tom love? Brady. <laughs> it's me, yes. and then Tom Brady. It's my wife, and then Tom Brady. I don't even need to say it. She you don't says even it say for our me. Kids. Nope, it's Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. I asked you this like a couple nights ago while we were just laying in bed, and I was like, "What are you grateful for today?" Oh, and what did I say? Initially. Tom Brady. No, no, no. What did I say initially? He's like, well, you, of course. No, but, I didn't say it like that. But aside from you. No, I said my I know beautiful. It's gonna, I know it's going to sound funny, but I'm actually really thankful to for Tom Brady. 
I'm just really thankful that I'm able to see in my lifetime somebody of his athletic ability. You know, like my dad talked about people and I never got to see him. So I'm really thankful for Tom Brady. That was you. That was you when the moonlight was coming through our room and I was like, I'm going to ask Blake a really deep question. And you pledged your love to Tom Brady. Oh my God. On that note, let's wrap up this episode. (laughs) Glad you threw this unnecessary portion in. No, this is good. I love it. People are getting to know us. I know. That's the point. And how I keep you up at night asking you questions. And and my answer is Tom Brady. And I whip out my angel (laughs) oracle cards. Oh my gosh. Well, we'll talk about that next time. Oh my God. Are you ready to close out this? I am. uh, (laughs) <laughs> this pull, this Pulitzer Prize, or Pulitzer Prize winning episode of uh, Atlanta Cast. It is yes. <laughs> I love you. Let's do it. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody who celebrates. And if you don't, we are thankful for you. We're thankful for you for listening. We're thankful for you for telling your friends about Outlander Cast. We're thankful for you for being a member of the Outlander Cast clan gathering on Facebook. I'm super thankful for you if you check out hashtag Minute with Mary on Facebook or if you become a client of mine. I'm really thankful for that. We know what Blake's thankful for. I wonder if Tom Brady listens. Do you think he watches Outlander? Not at all. Of course he watches Outlander. No, he doesn't. Giselle makes him watch Outlander. Nope. She, I bet you she makes him watch all this. No, all the this crazy is her, stuff. This is Giselle's guilty pleasure when he's at practice. <laughs> you know it. You know Tom Brady is that kind of I'm husband. I'm done with Tom Brady. He's that kind of husband that would do anything for his wife. I'm just saying. Anyway, what else do you have to say aside uh, from Tom Brady? Uh, no, no, that that's it. That's uh, thank you. I, I, you know what I realized? Not only are we podcasting on this Thanksgiving, we actually podcasted on last Christmas, Christmas Day. We podcasted. We also podcasted the day I gave birth. Uh, no, it wasn't the day. Yes, I gave birth at one a.m. Oh no, we watched the episode. We watched Never the episode mind. and we podcasted. Did we like, podcast while I was in labor? Probably. No. no. Well, yes, we, we definitely did that. <laughs> But we pot. We We're actually, dedicated. We actually podcasted. Uh, I think it was three days after you gave birth to Felicity. Like I think it was that first or second day back home. We podcasted about Outlanda, uh, which was actually really cool. And uh, so, but uh, all kidding aside, I uh, I am very thankful for my beautiful bride. I'm very thankful for my kids. But most importantly, well, not most, but aside from my wife. I'm very thankful to you, the listeners. I'm getting sad. Why are you getting sad? Well, I was just going to read a recent iTunes review. And read a couple it. people have been mean. Well, read it. <laughs> let, let's read it. Let's, let's, get it, out in the, oh let's get it out in the air. Amy J. Bogert said, please stop calling her leg hair. It isn't funny. And she gave us one star. Wow. And okay. she said, please, you know how to pronounce her name. It's not leg hair. <laughs> and she gave us one star. Can someone who likes us go in and... And give us the stars that you like us. We, we also have ones? another one. Another one from Steve One Young. He says, so disappointing. If you're into exceptionally pretentious, extremely phony sounding, and phenomenally self-obsessed podcast hosts, wow. then this is certainly the podcast for you. <laughs> so this I, is like mean tweets. I am not thankful for these people rating reviews. I should not have looked at this at this moment. Do we have any good ones? Um, Yes. Okay, give me a good one. Pool Maiden. Pool Maiden gives right. us a five star saying, Mary and Blake bring a lot of humor and great insight into each episode. This podcast is not one, not a one way street though, as they encourage and include listener feedback and also love how between seasons they are going to keep the party going, interviewing the cast and the crew. If you're a fan of the show, you need to give this a listen. Denise Marie 916 um, even gave us five stars and even said like, please keep podcasting. By the way, every time I hear a child in the background, I totally feel your pain (laughs) and she stayed up uh oh gosh this yes so there's lots of good lots of good there there, there is lots of good i'm sorry i'm sorry amy joe bogart that we call her leg hair but that's just what we do that's That's just what we do now that's how we roll i'm take committed i have to call her leg hair so just like margus i'm take committed so aside from itunes i really want to thank peg and bobby Tracy, Carolyn, Lisa, Meredith, Amy, Christina, Sue, Keelan, Meredith, Liz, Dana, Nikki, 
and Michelle, Tara, Jennifer, Lauren, Heather, and Marilyn. So thank you guys. Thank you all so much. They are at a certain level of patrons that I want to give them a shout out on the podcast. Don't forget if you're a Sassanac level or above, if you want to order from minutewithmary.com, just shoot me a message on Facebook and say, hey, I'm going to do this order because I'm going to save you 10%. And if you want to hear Blake's chapter by chapter analysis, which, hey, you got picked that up a little bit. I was told to save them for for Droughtlander by by many of the fans. I want one. You want one. I want one this weekend, this holiday weekend. Give it to us. Well, you got to give me time to do it. I got to read the chapter. I got to do the recording. What are you doing tonight? I'm going to bed soon. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm doing. Well, until next time, folks, I'm Mary Larson. My name's Tom Brady. And you've been watching or listening both, if you're on Facebook Live, to Outlander Cast.